So after I watched my screener the other day, I tweeted that Tom Holland's luck might be changing after all because I hated Cherry so much and I was worried that he was going to get hit with a one-two punch. Now, many of you are like, oh my God, does that mean this move is really good? Now, I wouldn't go that far. Chaos Walking is not a great movie, but it's not a bad movie either. I was pleasantly surprised, although I was coming off of Cherry. Although that's not fair to this movie. I think there's actually some really good stuff here. So let's talk about it. Now, Chaos Walking was originally filmed way back in 2017, but because it tested very poorly, I think they threw out the entire ending, it needed reshoots. But, and there ain't nothing wrong with reshoots, by the way. They saved Rogue One. A movie should never be afraid of reshoots. But here, what was scary was that the two leads were already booked with their major franchises. Speaking of Star Wars, Daisy Ridley was, had to film Rise of Skywalker, and Tom Holland had to film Spider-Man Far From Home. So they couldn't return for reshoots for Chaos Walking until April 2019. Two years! after they'd first shot the movie. And then Lionsgate still sat on it for two years. Now they partially blame the pandemic, but come on, I actually think this, this is a theatrical play. I think this would have been a much stronger digital play. If this had been released digitally this weekend instead of only in theaters, I think it would have blown up and it would have been serious competition for Raya. It could still maybe do well. It's pretty good. Now, you'd never be able to know that the film sat on the shelf for so long. Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley look exactly the same. Uh, but there's one thing that gives it away, and that's that this is clearly meant to build on the popularity of franchises like The Hunger Games and Divergent, also both from Lionsgate. However, move, by the time Chaos Walking has hit, the, has hit the general public, it seems like those other movies came out ages ago. So Chaos Walking is like really late to the party. Uh, and like those other movies, it's clearly meant to be the start of a franchise, and this is only the beginning of the story. The story only vaguely gets started, and it's kind of frustrating because we know at this point it's unlikely that the story will continue, although I have a way that I think that it can, which I'll say at the end of this video, but it's not going to continue with Holland and Ridley, unless this does like really well. I mean, never say never. As I said, it's like surprisingly like watchable. So maybe, but I mean, I think they have other, you know, I don't know. Daisy Ridley's dance card seems pretty, pretty available, but Tom Holland has, has, you know, he's now doing Uncharted. I don't know if he'd want to return to this. Now the movie works for two reasons on two levels, the charisma of its two stars and this idea of noise. A lot of you who read the books were like, don't write off noise, Grace. And you were right. Noise is pretty darn interesting. So yes, as everyone knows by now, Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley have a lot of star power, and they're both very good at action, by the way. Their physicality here is excellent, particularly Daisy Ridley. She's great. I always liked her in Star Wars. I felt that her role didn't do her any favors, but I thought she did the most with it that she possibly could. She's great. She's definitely an action actress. Uh, and they also, this was a surprise, happened to have fantastic chemistry together. Like, wow. Ridley looks fantastic with her blonde page boy and futuristic outfits. She's like a feminist camping version of Mila Jovovich's Lilo, kind of. And Tom Holland, at times sleeveless and even shirtless for you Tom Holland stands, he cuts a rugged survivor figure. Chaos Walking is a sci-fi film for sure, but it's also surprisingly romantic, uh, with, a lot of, with a lot of heat between Ridley and Holland, balanced out by the hilarious and interesting wrinkle that thanks to noise, Ridley can hear and even see everything that Holland is thinking often about her. That was great. She's the first woman he ever saw, so of course he has a lot to think about. The biggest reason to see this story continue, in my opinion, would be to see their relationship develop. It's really interesting. And I have to say, as a woman, I'd love to see what guys are thinking. You're just as big a mystery to us as you are, as we are to you. <laughs> I don't know why you don't think that's true. All right, so anyway, uh, and although I can see how frustrating it would be not to have the women's you know, thoughts on display, but that's all discussed here, which I think is really cool. Now, as for this noise, the trailers have not done it justice. Maybe they weren't done with the VFX by the time they cut the trailer, I don't know. But I don't want to spoil any of the surprises that, that are in the film thanks to the noise. But let's just say it ends up bordering on a superpower used in several very clever ways. And it also ends up being a commentary on gender with how men interact in groups and that, as I said, women seem to be a mystery to them. Also, David Oyelowo's preacher has fully embraced his noise, 
with impressive results. That was really cool. Side note though, Oyelowo's Preacher does one of the worst things I've ever seen on film. Like, wow, I can't believe they did it. I was like, are you actually doing that? Oh my God, you did. I guess that's where the hundred million went. Visual effects for the noise. That's how much it cost to make this movie. I mean, they had to do reshoots, but that was only additional 15. They were already up to 85. Although there's a pretty cool spaceship that shows up at the end of the movie, which is very well realized. And in that way, Chaos Walking is a little bit like Raised by Wolves, too, with humanity having to start over on a new world, but bringing all their problems with them. A lot of baggage. That ship's got a lot of, not just actual baggage, but emotional baggage. Uh, but aside from the noise in the spaceship, Chaos Walking often looks dirt cheap, like wow. But thankfully, it's two stars and director Doug Lyman, Fetty Alvarez directed the reshoots. He's also very talented. They make the material seem theater worthy, even though sometimes, as I said, it does seem very cheap. One missed opportunity is that in a world of all men, there seems to be only one gay couple who've raised Tom Holland's character, yet their romantic relationship is barely hinted at. I mean, it's clearly there, but they really don't do anything with it at all. And there is a twist also that reveals deep misogyny, which is a problem, it's a problem today, it's been a problem for a long time, and apparently it's a problem in the future as well. But that's also only hinted at. Exploring a male version of the Amazons, and then also the very real odd fear that some men have of strong women, could have elevated this material even more so significantly. But still, those, there are hints of those things here, and that is, it's interesting even in hint form. Now, Chaos Walking isn't a must-see, but it's certainly not a waste of time, as you can see from my review. And it's further proof that Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley, I think, are movie stars. I really like them a lot. There are a couple other big name actors here too. You'll be like, oh yeah, I know that person. Oh yeah, what's Nick Jonas doing in here? Embarrassing himself. I, I, I like Nick Jonas, but he really did not belong in this movie. Uh, but none of them really get a chance to make an impression because it's really Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley's movie. Oscar Yaneda's Wilf, if you read the books, uh, has been totally cut from the film. He's not in this movie at all. So as I said, I suspect a totally new ending was filmed, but I like the new ending. So uh, Hollywood's a tough business. And while, as I said, Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley likely can't continue with this, I think in the age of streaming, Lionsgate should consider recasting the lead roles and reimagining this as a streaming series while they're, while they're, where they will have the time to explore all the interesting things at play here. I think this could be a really good streaming series, in fact, especially if they could find two actors with the chemistry of Holland and Ridley. Because I said, as I said, at its, at its core, this is actually a romance. I would watch this. I think this is very good. So that's my review of Chaos Walking, which uh, th hits theaters only this Friday. Uh, and then we'll head to digital with the traditional release window of about three months. Months. Uh, we'll see. I mean, it's a shame. I think it would have done great on digital this weekend. So I'll be curious if some of you will venture out to see it. It's available on IMAX. Is it worth seeing on IMAX? It's pretty. It has a lot of really cool vi vistas of the new world. Uh, and then also, I think the noise is pretty interesting VFX wise. So yeah, if you, you know, treat yourself. You have, you know, we don't go to the movies very often these days. You know, why not sit in a nice IMAX theater and get a really nice picture? All right, so share your own thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.